is up again guys welcome back to the homestead today's video is going to be all about running our sawmill uh, in the last video we were working on the uh, perimeters marking the corners of the perimeter for our duck run our poultry run and now i've got some other posts in the ground and we need some lumber to actually start framing out the floor for the nesting shed that uh, the ducks and chickens are going to use uh, but we're going to be knocking out two birds with one stone today we're also going to be talking about the sawmill why we went with this sawmill and then we're also going to put it to the test because these guys boast timber king boasts that you can cut um, as fine as 1 16th of an inch using their sawmills so i haven't had the opportunity to do that yet but we're going to see if we can get it done uh, the other thing is we're kind of running a half dull blade today so as I get through this big log, I might have to replace the blade. We'll see. Uh, I already know the outcome because this was that big log yesterday, and when we shot this, we lost the footage. So I'm shooting this again. Um, real quick, I guess, to, to, to start us off. Um, when we were looking at sawmills, some of you guys know when we started started here at the homestead and we, we just started to dabble in cutting our own wood and our own, our own lumber and stuff for the greenhouse, I was actually using an Alaskan sawmill. So I've got a steel 880 with a 44 or 48 inch bar on it that we can rip down stuff with a chainsaw. However, it's not conducive to time management. And we have a lot of big projects here and we need a lot of lumber. And we've also got a lot of mature forest, so that means a lot of big logs. And lugging the big chainsaw around is uh, it's cool for big slabs. It certainly has its place out here, but we needed a real deal sawmill where we could actually create some production when it came to uh, dimension lumber. So we were looking at the Cooks MP32, the uh, Easy Boardwalk uh, 40, and then the Timber King 1220. And the reason we went with all three of those manufacturers when we started to look was because they were all solid box, solid steel box construction, and they're all welded together. All your rails and stuff are welded here. Uh, there's no bolt together stuff that can really come undone. Uh, all the vibrating that you get when you're cutting a big log, these things just, they, they maintain their shape better than some of those cheap Chinese mills. So first thing, box steel construction, welded box steel construction. The second thing we were looking for in a sawmill was the four post head. Now, four post head, there's two posts on each side for the motor mount and the, and the band saw to be mounted on. And when it's cutting, those two sides maintain the same shape as the rail. So if our rails are straight, our motor head stays straight. Some manufacturers make motor heads that are only mounted on one side of the rail or the other. And what can happen is it can start bouncing around with the doll blade and you can get wavy cuts and stuff like that. We might have to cut slower with the doll blade, but the motor head keeps everything pretty top notch straight. The last thing we were really looking for was the size of the cutthroat. Now I think on this sawmill, I mean, it's obviously, it's adjusted down right now, but I think I can cut up to 28 or 30 inches thick here on the Timber King 1220, which is for, you know, a small manual mill, um, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge cutthroat. So, we can cut big logs, it can handle the abuse of putting the big logs on and off of it. Oh, 23 horsepower, it's got the power to cut through those big logs. You know, and it's just built well. I mean, these, those three companies make mills that are pretty much bomb proof. Uh, bomb proof. But uh, again, Timber King is, is boasting the the the, uh, the margin of error and having the finest margin of error. So we're going to see if we can actually rip down a one sixteenth of an inch thin slice off of this cant once we get it all shaped down. So stay tuned. We'll get this thing running and uh, we'll get some lumber cut for our duck pond. Perfect 
for a duck pan. This is the 16th of an inch challenge with the Timber King 1220. That is absolutely stupid. I only needed to see a foot of that. Teeth of an inch. That is just absolutely what see. I mean, it's just paper thin, paper thin stuff here. The Timber King, the Timber King is a beast. They were not kidding. That is That is dead on at a six inch. That's crazy. All right, guys, so here's our cant minus that one sixteenth of an inch sheet off the top here. Uh, what we're going to basically do is um, split this thing right down the middle here. This is going to be used for, like, flooring joists for the poultry shed, the laying shed, the nesting shed. Um, so I'm not really concerned with uh, the width of the boards. Um, 
with this cant here we're at 13 and quarter so we will be at six and five eighths in terms of width and then what we'll do is I'll rip it down into one and a half inch thicknesses um, and we should be able to get we ought to be able to get at least a dozen boards out of this thing so uh, let's get ripping All right, guys, wrap up. We've got half of our cant cut down. We've got eight two by sixes over there for uh, the flooring system in the nesting shed. 
And then tomorrow I'm going to bust out the rest of these. I should be able to get another eight, maybe ten two by sixes out of these two, two cants that are up here. Um, but just to recap, things to look for on your own sawmill. Box steel construction, welded, not bolted together. Four post saw head, welded, not bolted together. And then uh, obviously you want to look for the, the width and the height of a cant that you can actually cut down. So look for the width on that throat for your sawmill. Uh, again, the Timber King, the, the 1220 like we have, I'm, I'm almost positive it's, it's either 28 or 30 inches throat cut. Um, so we can obviously cut down some, some big logs. Uh, and nothing will go to waste. You know, the slabs that we took off of this log in the very beginning are going to be used for walls on raised beds and stuff like that. So, and then uh, whatever, whatever we can't build with, obviously, is going to go into the wood stove and heat the house over the wintertime. So nothing goes to waste. We, uh, we create from the resources that we have here on the property. And uh, in the end, we end up with a better product, better quality product, because pressure treated pine is not going to stand up nearly as well as even this red oak will. So hardwood, this stuff will outlive us. That, uh, that nesting shed is going to be there for, for many, many years to come, especially once we get some uh, oil and diesel fuel onto this stuff to treat it. So. Uh, again, guys, thanks for watching. We'll be doing the next video on uh, the duck bed, or excuse me, the duck, the, the nesting shed. The nesting shed. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to be 10 by 10, so we'll have it split. Chickens on one side nesting, ducks on the other side nesting, and then they'll have that entire run that we were working on the other day to themselves. So uh, they'll be in captivity, but it's more of like a free range kind of deal for them. It'll be better for the birds. Um, and, you know, obviously it'll be better for us because we can actually feed them off of, of free range in the woods. So, again, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.